Good day, ladies and gents. Today's video is not gonna be about Tarkov. Today's video is gonna be about Arena Breakout, the Tarkov Killer. So, the game recently came into open alpha. I'm gonna talk about what I like about it, uh, what I don't, and uh, if it's generally worth playing. So, first of all, uh, whenever you launch the game, you are greeted with a introduction that shows you how to play. Um, it explains how the guns work, it explains how to move, you know, all the basic details. The intro is very neat, um, however, I wish you could skip it, because for me, for a player that like knows a lot about FPS, I wouldn't really want to um, sit there and um, do the tutorial, but that's a small thing. Speaking of graphics and performance, I really enjoy the game. I think I was getting around 180 FPS on high to ultra settings without DLSS, and with DLSS I was getting around 250 to 160, so FPS was really high. And uh, graphics, and especially shadows, seem really decent. I would even say Avi is, uh, has better graphics than Tarkov when it comes to small details. You know, like little grass, leaves on the trees, some really tiny objects, like some dust, some rubbish. Um, all that looks uh, greater in Abbey. When it comes to movement, I think that's the thing I disliked the most in the early alpha of Abbey, because the movement seemed really clanky and soapy. It is, uh, it is much better now, but I think it's still something to work on, but at least uh, it doesn't really push me away from the game. Whenever my PMC is walking and I click shift to run, it does feel more smooth and uh, generally feels better. But I think movement is uh, something that still needs um, to be worked on. Now let's talk about the things that I actually think are great in Abbey and I think uh, Tarkov needs to, you know, um, rent those features from Abbey. First thing is healing. Healing is very simple to understand, it's very simple to use. If you get confused, like the game just tells you what to use. Whenever you click tab and you go into your health bar, you see what's broken, you see if you're bleeding, and it tells you which kit you need to use. Another thing is that you can use the same kit to heal your body without constantly canceling healing, canceling healing, canceling healing like it is like in Tarkov. Like if you have, um, if you need to heal your arms, your legs, you constantly need to heal, you need to cancel it and then you heal again the other body part. That is not the case in Abbey, you just click one thing and your guy keeps on healing until uh, your meds just run out. Another thing that I think is really great in Abbey and I really enjoyed in the new alpha is uh, kill cam. It doesn't matter if you play solo or if you play in a team. If you are downed, your teammates can rescue you. But if you die, um, if your enemy finishes you or you just die of bleeding, there is an option um, 60 seconds after your death to rewatch uh, how you died. Um, however, it leaves you with an option like you, you either spectate your teammates for the rest of the raid or you can um, rewatch the camera and uh, get back to lobby. So I think it's really smooth. Knowing how you died and where your opponent killed from benefits you in a couple of ways. First of all, you can definitely determine if the guy is cheating or not. Secondly, um, you can see how they played and maybe um, outplay them in the future. Maybe you can just like see a new spot. And it generally feels nicer to know how you died and where you got shot from. So that's, that's, that's a great uh, thumbs up from me. I love this mechanic. Now, let's talk about the most important thing, uh, the in-game economy and the microtransactions. I've done a couple of raids uh, after Open Alpha and uh, generally saying it is not that difficult to make money, especially if you play in a team. You either play in a team as a foreman, uh, solo or with randoms. There's a really neat system that allows you to um, quick, find, um, quick find games. So you select the map and there is an option to um, find a team or quick team up, which is very simple. And generally, you can easily make like 100 to 200k per rate on the lowest end of maps, like on the maps that are easy. And uh, if you go to your storage and you want to mod up a gun, it's not going to really cost you that much. Like, for example, if I mod this AK, uh, I think you can mod it up pretty well and it's going to cost you like 50,000 um, 50, uh, coins, which is not really that much. And... Um, at the same time, if you level up, you can go to bigger maps and uh, earn more rubles per game. Um, so yeah, I think economy is not too bad. It is uh, reasonable that you can make money and um, at the same time, um, have fun. So what about microtransactions? If we go to the store, there is a few things that you can buy. The, you can rent some of the cases. So you can get one of the cases for the quest and uh, you can rent those cases for five or ten dollars per month. So that's what we have regarding the cases. 
Um, you can also get bigger stash space. You get additional um, 150 grades of extra space and you get more market limitations. Like you get less market limitations. You can list more items on the market. And uh, you can also rent a key bar for $15 a month. That gives you a three times five uh, larger keychain for the keys. And you can rent a, or buy, you can permanently buy a communicator, which allows you to send messages in the world channel. Um, I mean, I don't really know what the point is, but uh, there is a world chat that you can type in um, and you have a limit of messages uh, per day. So maybe it's to make sure people don't spam. I don't know. Another thing that is purchasable via microtransactions is in-game currency. And I know it's a hot topic because first of all, it is difficult to balance the economy when there are microtransactions to buy the in-game coins. Some of the players will say, well, it doesn't really make any difference because you can one-tap anybody with a good bullet. So if somebody buys the gear using those coins, you can still one-tap them in the game and get all of their stuff. But at the same time, some people will say it eliminates the grind. And for newcomers, it is more difficult to learn the ropes um, when there might be like a lot of geared people running around. So obviously all of this needs a balance. And uh, my only hope is that it doesn't really break down the economy of Abi, and hopefully devs will see, analyze, and balance it out. Um, but yeah, you can let me know uh, your thoughts regarding uh, this kind of uh, microtransactions in the comments down below. And I think devs also said that in the future they will add um, skins that you will be able to buy, and that will be a way to um, su support the game as well. So, what's my verdict? Is Abby worth trying? I think yes, and uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, the game is really well optimized. No matter what kind of PC you have, you'll have decent frames compared to Tarkov. Um, secondly, the game is free. I don't really see a reason to not try out a free product because you don't really lose anything. There are microtransactions um, and you can buy in-game currency. However, all the content in the game is available for free. You can build any gun you want. You can get any attachments you want. Uh, you can get all the loot, everything and all of that without spending a single cent in the game. Um, and third reason, Tarkov Wipe is like three or four days away and I know people are getting bored of Tarkov. So if you want to get um, similar kind of emotions, if you want to get some adrenaline, uh, try out Abby. It's, a, it's another extra shooter, see if you like it. So that would be my conclusion. And uh, will Abby be a Tarkov killer? Well, only time will tell. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.